Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wally DM. Today we're going to do a character creation video, and um, the character that we're going to be creating today is going to be a shadow sorcerer. And information for a shadow sorcerer can be found in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. And this is a character that, if I got a chance to play in a game, um, this would definitely be the character that I'd want to play. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on him, his name is Ulfgar Brazik. He is a mountain dwarf that was a soldier in the Dwarven army and uh, went out on a mission and pretty much ambushed and an enemy you know stabbed him. Ulfgar falls back. Uh, enemy thinks he's dead. Well that's when Ulfgar's uh, shadow magic kicked in uh, bringing him back to life at one hit point and he used a uh, cantrip uh, the chilling touch and just reached out and and had this hand uh, uh, choke the life with necro damage and defeat his enemy. Um, when he did so, his his whole appearance changed. Uh, his skin is now pale. Um, he's got uh, uh, vibrant uh, purple eyes. His beard is a jet dark black. And um, when he goes and he casts his spells, um, his eyes light up, I mean, just to a bright purple smoke and mist come from his beard and things of that nature. So, um, really excited about this guy. I had a lot of fun creating him, and I'm going to go through the steps with you today. So, um, let's take a look at it. Today, we're going to be building a shadow sorcerer, Ulfgar Brazik. Okay, so let's begin our character creation with um, some of the things that I've already had in mind. And we'll go ahead and uh, give our dwarf a name. And I picked this from the um, uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything. We're going to go with Ulfgar Brazik. Ulfgar Brazik. Okay. Uh, class, he is a sorcerer, but he will actually be a shadow sorcerer. And level, for now, level 1. Race, I've already predetermined it, and we'll go over stat changes in just a little bit. But he will be a mountain dwarf. And again, I kind of skipped ahead already. Um, we will have a soldier background, and more on that in just a little bit. Uh, player name, Wally D. And alignment, as most soldiers are, we're going to go with lawful neutral. Now the ability scores that we rolled, we have a 12, 12, 14, 9, 10, and 16. And since the sorcerer requires a high charisma for his spell casting ability, we're going to take that 16 and put that down in charisma, which will give Ulfgar a plus 3. Um, in my opinion, the second most important stat for Ulfgar is going to be the constitution score because sorcerers have very low hit points um, so we'll put that 14 in constitution uh, strength we'll give him a 12 in strength a 12 dexterity and not as important to me in building this uh, shadow sorcerer is intelligence and wisdom so no bonus on wisdom uh, minus one on intelligence a plus 2 on constitution, a plus 1 on dexterity, and a plus 1 on strength. Okay, uh, so this is pretty much everything that I know uh, beforehand. Um, I've uh, thought up the, uh, the type of sorcerer that I wanted to create. I uh, browsed through the different races and have already decided on the race, which is the Mountain Dwarf. And I've gone through the backgrounds and found one that, um, um, that I like and would like to apply to Ulfgar. So, uh, let's go to page 20 in the Player's Handbook. And we're going to start filling in the stats for the Dwarf race. So our very first one says ability score increase. Your constitution increases by two. So 
very important once again for a sorcerer. So this will give us an additional three hit points every time we go up a level. And since the sorcerer only has a one die, uh, one d six, that will uh, that might be the difference between life or death. Uh, age we won't worry about right now, but the dwarves usually are considered young until they reach the age of 50 which is uh, not too much older than Wally D so we'll probably make Ulfgar 50 years old and uh, alignment we've already discussed that uh, it says most dwarves are lawful being firmly in the beliefs or in the benefits of a well-ordered society um, again Ulfgar was in the uh, military so lawful he's got um, he's uh, uh, very loyal to his fellow soldiers and anyone that will fight next to him. So um, his uh, his fellow sh soldiers are, uh, he has an extreme amount of loyalty towards them. Um, the neutral side being more that, um, you know, his, uh, his friends and his um, um, soldiers come first. Uh, size, uh, they're between four and five foot tall and approximately 150 pounds. Size is medium, which will give Ulfgar a speed of uh, 25. So we got that filled in right there. And our first ability, uh, dwarves have dark vision. And this is up to 60 feet. They also have what is called Dwarven Resilience. And Dwarven Resilience will give Ulfgar advantage on saves versus poison. The Dwarven Resilience will also give him poison resistance. Two really handy abilities right there. Um, Ulfgar also has Dwarven Combat Training, which makes him proficient in hammers and axes. And that's very important because I um, am really wanting to play or create a sorcerer character that carries a battle axe. So um, a little bit of magic with his old school um, military combat training tool proficiency as any soldier would we're going to enjoy some dwarven stout so we will have him proficient with brewers supplies always love me some dwarven stout Ulfgar as a, another dwarf ability gets stone cunning and stone cunning whenever we make an intelligence or history check Related to the origin of stonework, we are considered in uh, proficient in the history skill and double our proficiency bonus. Um, not sure how many times that'll come up, but I'm sure it will someday. So we will just put our languages. We have common and dwarvish. Simple enough. And now we get to select our subrace. And I have chosen for Ulfgar to be a mountain dwarf. And as he is now a mountain dwarf, he gets an additional plus two to his strength, taking this to 14 and a plus two. And I selected mountain dwarf because of the strength increase and because of dwarven armor training. And what dwarven armor training gives us is uh, proficiency with light and medium armor and again I, uh, I chose mountain dwarf to get the plus two to strength because he's going to be in combat using his battle axe and the uh, light to medium armor um, we don't want to send a sorcerer into hand-to-hand -hand combat without some type of armor so uh, this fits perfect uh, with my visions of the um, battling Shadow Sorcerer. Now before I start filling in statistics um, from the class pages, I've decided to go ahead and jump ahead to his background. So he is a soldier and we're going to come over here to the skill proficiencies. And he, being a soldier, he has skill proficiencies in athletics and intimidation. 
which makes total sense for a soldier because they have to be athletic and strong and um, uh, have you know lots of cardio and stuff like that. That way, you know, because they're going to be running, they're going to be charging, they're going to you know get into hand-to-hand -hand combat, things of that nature. And then intimidation, you know, you capture the enemy, you get up in your face, and you want to scare them um, into submission, and um, you know, just a fight for survival. Tool proficiencies, we get one type of gaming set and vehicles landing. Um, I'm not as excited about this, but um, we will put a gaming set and I believe that we're going to go with cards. So he, Ulfgar is going to be really good at playing cards. Uh, much like I was when I was in the military, we played a lot of spades and we played a lot of euchre. So um, one of our, my favorite pastimes, besides when they allow us to go out and drink some beer, um, as far as when we're at our annual training and things like that, we played a lot of cards. Ulfgar's starting equipment, he has a uh, he can have an insignia or rank um, so we're gonna have a uh, piece of rank insignia he's gonna have some common clothes a deck of cards and a pouch with a whopping 10 gold pieces now for specialty Ulfgar was an infantry soldier um, and he is an E5 Dwarven Buck Sergeant. And again, just something that I'm drawing from my own past, um, being an E5 soldier. And what's really neat, and, and how a Dungeon Master could use a background such as soldier, um, in a case such as Ulfgar, where he was a, uh, uh, a former infantry soldier with, uh, with a decent, um, NCO rank is uh, maybe we could go to our clan and uh, those still in the military there would recognize the authority and the influence and we could use um, that rank and uh, that former position in the dwarven military to maybe um, gather up some equipment, some horses, or um, call in some personal favors. So um, definitely a role-playing thing to keep in mind if we are um, in a uh, dwarven area it doesn't even have to be where Ulfgar was from it could be any dwarven area that would recognize his former military rank continuing on with background I've chosen a few characteristics here that will help me play this character and uh, let's see personality traits Ulfgar is always polite and respectful as most military members are uh, very uh, polite respectful yes sir yes ma'am and he also is uh, faithful to his fellow combat companions so if you uh, fight side by side with Ufgar uh, you gain his respect and he will um, he will be there for you when you need him um, some of his ideals is responsibility and that is uh, do what I must and obey just authority. Authority. And that, of course, comes back to him being a lawful character. As far as bonds, those who fight beside me are those worth dying for. Again, kind of going back to my personality traits, or to Ulfgar's personality traits. If you fight with him, he'll fight to the death with you. Now his flaws, I kind of had a hard time coming up with these, but um, what I have decided for Ulfgar is when he uses some of his more evil-leaning, more cold-leaning um, it's like with regards to necromagic or uh, cold magic, he seems to enjoy it a little bit too much. And if I were to be playing this character, I would probably roll, have a certain percentage that I would set. And depending on that percentage, um, if he throws out a, a necrotic 
uh, spell. Um, depending on the percentage, he may do that again, and he may seem to enjoy it just a little bit too much, maybe even getting a little bit of laughing going on. So he kind of steps a um, little PTSD type of stuff, and he might just step off um, the deep end a little bit. So, um, so for his flaw, enjoys necro cold spells just a little too much, and you may find him laughing as he's using these powers. Now looking at our skills, we have already uh, determined that the soldier background gives uh, Ulfgar proficiencies in athletics, so this will make this a, uh, a plus four, and in intimidation, which goes off charisma, so this will be a plus five on intimidation, which makes sense for a soldier. Maybe he's had to torture or try to get information out of the enemy before, so having intimidation works. But then I also thought maybe he wants to be nice about it. So this is where we're going to have persuasion. Maybe he's done a little bit of espionage or things like that. So we will give Ulfgar a plus five with persuasion. And the final one I decided was insight. Maybe he can look at a few things and see how they work. Um, unfortunately, our wisdom doesn't cooperate with us, but we'll get a plus two on um, an insight check. Our hit dice, we have one sorcerer hit die. And I believe I can go ahead and put our weapon in here. And we have, for Ulfgar, a battle axe. And his backup will be a pair of hand axes. And we will fill in that in just a little bit. But for now, let's take a look at some of these spells that I have chosen for our first level Shadow Sorcerer. Now, Ulfgar gets four cantrips, and he has two known sorcerer spells to start with on level one. And these are the six spells that I've chosen, and I will give you a little bit of insight on why I chose them. Uh, starting with the first one, which is Blade Ward. And Blade Ward is pretty much a cantrip that would give Ulfgar resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for one turn. The problem is, is it takes an action to cast a spell, so he would not be able to um, go into combat on that turn as you would have to cast Blade Ward. But what I did was this cantrip is I looked to the future a little bit and as far as using our future sorcerer points um, there is an ability that will that will help us um, cast Blade Ward as a cantrip. So he'll be able to cast Blade Ward or uh, cast Blade Ward as a bonus action. I'm sorry. So he'll be able to cast uh, Blade Ward as a bonus action giving himself resistance and then still get into battle with his uh, battle axe. Um, we'll talk about that in um, a little bit later when we advance Ulfgar to level 3. Now we do have a Shadow Sorcerer and they kind of edge on life and death so I felt a Necromancy spell would be perfect and if you remember my background as far as one of Ulfgar's flaws this is the spell he gets carried away with and that is Chill Touch and what Chill Touch does is it puts out a skeletal hand and it's got a range of 120 feet so this is Ulfgar's main range weapon attack and by by sending that hand out there if he hits and causes some Necromancy necrotic damage that's when he starts to get you know a little laughing a little bit carried away and his PTSD starts to kick in and he just he just feels the sorcery energy um, firing through him and he just wants to keep using that and using that and sometimes might not know when to stop on an enemy so chill touch that's Ulfgar's main um, main cantrip that he uses in battle when he's not swinging his axe I've also included Frostbite. I thought I'd pick two different elements that kind of um, uh, go with a Shadow Sorcerer and uh, Necro Damage being number one and Cold Damage being number two. So uh, Frostbite is a nice little um, cantrip that can do some range damage that is um, a, a different type of damage than Necro. So we're going with Necro and Cold pretty much the rest of the way out if we can. Uh, the fourth cantrip that I've chosen for Ulfgar is Minor Illusion. I needed something that was non-combat that might um, help in some role playing and stuff. And I feel that being able to create a uh, Minor Illusion um, might come in very handy. So looking forward to that. 
For our first level spells, this one I'm really excited about. This is Absorb Elements. It can be found in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. And what it does is it is a reaction spell, so cast it as a reaction, and that is whenever Ulfgar takes acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage. So he will only take half damage from that. But what, what it does is it also stores that up uh, within him, and the next time that he goes and swings and hits with his battle axe, we get an extra d6 of whatever that damage was. So if Ulfgar gets hit with, uh, let's say, fire damage, not only does he take half of that, but on his next swing in uh, combat, he swings down with his battle axe and hits, he also gets an extra d6 of that fire damage. So it's like he took some of it, absorbed it, and now is bringing it right back to the opponent. And the final one, I couldn't really find a first level spell that was in the necro um, necro category, so we went with um, Ice Knife, and that is also in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and Ice Knife is another cold base uh, combat damage spell that Ulfgar can use if um, it, when the time is right. Now before we leave this spell area, we're just going to fill this in. Um, spell casting ability is Charisma. Um, his spell save DC will be a 13 and spell attack bonus will be a plus 5 and that all can be found uh, by a simple formula on page 101 of the player's handbook so that is it for the player's handbook let's take a look at shadow sorcerer and Xanathar's guide to everything So in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, it gives a, a few more background ideas, um, especially with um, how the sorcerer uh, gained its powers and what effect uh, mentally and physically it has on the sorcerer. Um, the first one being Arcane Origin, you know, was the sorcerer part of a, um, get his powers from a bloodline, uh, a family bloodline, a reincarnation, um, some kind of powerful entity granted it upon. Uh, him or her. With uh, regards to Ulfgar, the uh, the shadow sorcerer, um, I'm leaving this blank as far as the Orcane origin because I think it would be a good thing for um, a DM to create a story around. And in fact, that may be um, one of the things that Ulfgar is setting out to do. He doesn't know why he became, why he was chosen or why he has his powers so he may be setting out on a journey to figure out uh, not just to figure out how to better use them but also to figure out why um, why he has them and why he is uh, who he is now a couple of the other things reactions how does the community react well with Ulfgar um, even his uh, closest military buddies uh, because he has and this kind of touches on with supernatural marks and signs of sorcery and in and my apologies for not going through all of it I'm trying to keep it a little bit short but it's all on page 48 and 49 of Xanathar's guide to everything but um, reactions how do the people close to Ulfgar react um, so as far as him being a soldier and stuff um, his military buddies uh, they still care for him and and things like that but they're a little bit freaked out about his transformation because as far as supernatural marks uh, he is now a very pale skinned mountain dwarf he has a jet black dark beard and his eyes are a um, are a uh, deep purple and uh, signs of sorcery tie into that when he casts a spell um, his eyes will just glow a vibrant purple and his uh, his beard will will start to smoke as if shadows are pouring from his beard and depending on the level of the spell the more intense it can it can get so um, as far as a cantrip goes um, you know his eyes will light up a little bit some smoke pours from his beard but as he progresses in level and gets those second third and fourth level spells then I mean he looks I mean he lo he's gonna look like a mean son of a bitch I mean he's gonna just you know his, his eyes are just gonna radiate this you know this purple glow maybe shoot some beams out uh, you know the smoke is just gonna pour from his beard um, and things like that so that's that's what I chose for that. 
Now for a shadow sorcerer, there's also some quirks, and that's on the following page. And, and number one hits it right off the bat. Uh, one of Ulfgar's quirks is you are always cold to the touch. And with him concentrating or his powers revolving around uh, necro and uh, cold spells, um, I felt this one was the perfect one. So and, you know anybody that uh, touches Ulfgar or whatever, his skin is just ice, ice cold. Now one of the first level advantages for a shadow sorcerer is called Eyes of the Dark. And what Eyes of the Dark does is it takes our 60 foot dwarven dark vision and turns it into a 120 foot dark vision. So a range of 120 feet with our dark vision. So that's really, really, really good. Um, and then the second thing is is strength of the grave and we'll put that right here strength of the grave and what strength of the grave is is starting at first level um, a, a shadow sorcerer has this um, existence between life and death and if damage would reduce Ulfgar to zero hit points he can make a charisma saving throw and the DC of that charisma of that saving throw so uh, save I don't know if you can see that there let me move this up a little bit okay so strength of the grave if damage would reduce Ulfgar to less than zero hit points he is allowed to make a charisma saving throw uh, the DC for that charisma saving throw is five plus however much damage he's uh, taken so if Ulfgar was at, at five hit points he gets hit for six hit points of damage which would lower him to below zero um, his DC he can make a charisma saving throw with a DC of five plus six which is eleven if he is successful on that instead of dying he uh, simply drops to one hit point so uh, a very powerful uh, ability that pretty much gives the shadow sorcerer one you know um, you know a uh, an extra life if you will and uh, this ability can be used once per day and this is the ability that I um, centered Ulfgar's backstory on um, again he was out um, on a military mission, um, him and his uh, buddy and uh, Ulfgar was struck down and presumed to be dead. But it actually the sh uh, the strength of the grave kicked in. His you know he uh, got his you know his sorcery powers came to light, and that's when you know he came back to life with uh, one hit point and um, was able to uh, uh, defeat his uh, his enemy. So let's fill in the rest of this real quick. Um, hit points, uh, sorcerers get a 1d6. Uh, so Ulfgar's constitution of plus three will give him nine hit points. His battle axe, he gets a plus four to hit. And a 1d10. And that is slashing damage. And 1d10 is two-handed. Uh, Ulfgar is not proficient in shields, so he's always uh, swinging the battle axe with both hands to get maximum damage. If uh, for some reason he doesn't have his battle axe, uh, he will pull out his hand axes, which both also give a plus four to hit, and are a 1d6 plus two. And he doesn't get two attacks. He just has two axes just in case he decides to throw one or uh, just to look cool to have one in each hand. As far as his armor class goes, Ulfgar is wearing a scale mail. And that actually gives him disadvantage on stealth checks, which doesn't matter because Ulfgar is not one to hide very often. And with the scale mail and a plus one on dexterity that will give him an armor class of 15 uh, filling in this initiative square here that is dex so that is plus one and I believe that we have completed Ulfgar Brazik he is a shadow sorcerer mountain dwarf this is the level one version of him 
So Ulfgar is now level 2, and level 2 we receive Font of Magic. And I'm going to put it here where it says Temporary Hit Points. We're going to get what's called Sorcery Points. And we will have two Sorcery Points, and what they can be used for at second level is Flexible Casting. Now we can t uh, trade two Sorcery Points for one first level spell slot. So sorcery points um, so far can be turned into spell slots for additional spells to cast. At second level we also get to add one more first level spell and I have chosen Featherfall and I like Featherfall just as uh, more of a in a non-combat routine as far as if Ulfgar and his traveling companions were to fall in a pit, fall off a cliff, uh, something like that, then he would be able to um, pretty much uh, save them from taking falling damage um, by casting this as a reaction. Um, a good first level spell to have. So that should do it for second level, and I did adjust hit points there, so Ulfgar now has 16 hit points. Uh, let's take Ulfgar to level 3 so we can get more shadow sorcerer abilities, and also talk about meta magic. So this is the most important level um, for Ulfgar, because he gets some really cool stuff here. So let's start with this. We've got um, level 3 here. We're going to take the four hit points for his d6 plus his three constitution that will put Ulfgar at 23. Uh, he also gets an extra sorcery point so that'll put him at three sorcery points and he is now a uh, three hit die creature. Now what meta magic is at third level sorcerers get to choose two abilities and it uh, it's called meta magic and it allows them to twist their spells or make their spells more powerful now there is a total of one two three four five six seven eight there's a total of eight that you can choose from that's on page one zero two of the player's handbook if you'd like to check those out but um, the two that I have picked for Ulfgar is number one is called the quickened spell uh, so when we cast a spell that has a casting time of one action, you, I can uh, spend two sorcery points to change the casting time to one bonus action. And if you remember what I said about Blade Ward, that is our cantrip that costs one action. So if we need to go into battle uh, against armed uh, skeletons or something that's going to be hitting us with bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, I can use two sorcery points. Uh, cast Blade Ward as a bonus action and then charge into combat with my Battle Axe and not losing a step. So I really like Quicken Spell as the first meta magic option and the second meta, meta magic option is Twin Spell. And what Twin Spell is is when we cast a spell that targets only one creature and it and uh, doesn't have a range of self, so you know not targeting ourselves, we can spend a number of sorcery points equal to the spell's level to target a second creature in range with the same spell. And again, um, Ulfgar's ranged attack is Chill Touch, and Chill Touch has a range of 120 feet, and it targets one creature. So by and since it's a cantrip, we can spend one sorcery point, and we can pretty much double chill touch. So instead of one spectral hand going out there and grabbing a hold of somebody, now if there's two enemies, we have two. We can cast two chilling touches, so we can grab two enemies with our uh, necro damage. So uh, quicken spell and twin spell, um, based just on um, uh, chill touch and blade board which I'm uh, really excited about so that is meta magic and that is level 3 from the player's handbook but now we also gain some level 3 abilities in Xanathar's guide to everything for the shadow sorcerer now if you remember on level 1 we received an ability called eyes of the dark which gives Ulfgar 120 foot range of dark vision well the second part of that is the ability to always have this spell darkness prepared and darkness is a second level spell now we can we can use a level 2 spell slot to cast that or we can expend two sorcery points 
if we expend two sorcery points, then when we cast darkness, we can uh, Ulfgar can still see through it. So a an extreme advantage for the shadow sorcerer. Instead of um, casting it with the spell slots where everybody is dark and can't see, um, Ulfgar can just bring out this this intense dark shadow shadow magic use his two sorcery points cast darkness and then just go to town with his battle axe because he can see and nobody else can so uh, uh, just a really cool ability that um, just sets the tone of a shadow sorcerer now since we can only know four spells with the exception of darkness because that is giving to us as our um, being a shadow sorcerer the first second level spell that I would like to learn is Dragon Breath. And Dragon's Breath, uh, it's it only um, the casting time is a bonus action, and we can use this on ourselves, or we can touch a willing creature and give them um, this ability. And what is what it is? As long as uh, Ulfgar concentrates for a minute, um, either himself or whoever he touched, uh, gets the ability to breathe a magical energy like a dragon um, in a 15-foot cone and when casting this spell we can choose acid cold fire lightning or poison and since Ulfgar um, his sorcery abilities um, lean towards necrotic damage and cold damage this is right up his alley so we're gonna take and uh, pretty much nine times out of ten it's gonna be a 15 foot cone of cold that um, we're gonna be able to use in combat now since we have a cold based spell I feel okay giving up ice knife for now um, I may come back and uh, and put ice knife back but uh, for now we're gonna take ice knife off of our first um, as our first level spell um, because in the player's handbook it says additionally when we gain a level in this class we can choose one sorcerer spell and swap it out for another as long as it's a level that we can cast so we gain dragon's breath our second level spell and we're gonna swap out um, our first level spell ice knife for um, another second level spell and this one's going to be Misty Step and um, this is a uh, can be cast as a bonus action and it pretty much just teleports us 30 feet um, but what I like about it it says briefly surrounded by silvery mist so it kind of fits into my my whole idea of the shadow sorcerer you know a mist comes around and all of a sudden Ulfgar teleports 30 feet now this could be to get to an area that he can't get to to get across something or even in combat when he wants to uh, um, you know smash somebody from behind and um, you know um, surprise him and maybe get advantage on the roll so um, so I'm dropping a first level spell so that uh, we can cast uh, misty step and it uh, and I'm really liking the spells um, for our third level sorcerer. So that is Ulfgar Brazik, and he is a mountain dwarf shadow sorcerer. And again, the shadow sorcerer can be found in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Um, I had a ton of fun making this character. Um, I've, I've, uh, I, I don't get to play very often, but Ulfgar is definitely a character, if I got a chance to play, that I would love, love, love to bring to the table um, just so much um, I just I really involved myself in the backstory uh, you know with the military background and um, you know just the cool stuff that comes to life when he's uh, using his abilities so um, a lot of fun until I do get a chance to play though um, guaranteed he will probably be making an appearance in my campaign as an NPC and uh, hopefully help out uh, the party um, a few times on their adventures so what do you think of the video do you want to see some more character creation like this um, I've got a few more ideas in my head of uh, um, of characters that I would play if I got a chance to uh, be a player in a game or is there a particular race uh, slash class that you would uh, like to see built um, in a uh, future video uh, make sure to comment below let me know what you're thinking um, if you would please like share and subscribe and as always on to the next